honest scene that is. Mm -hmm. It's it's she, you know, she's she's a very strong character, and and she's very understated, and I think that's she she lent a lot to that role, her acting. That's why you got to bring in. That's why I like about. Well, once again, I, I think the good directors know to bring in. Good day players. This is going to be really random, but we did an episode about the movie Death Race directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, the remake. And he was talking about how hard it is to get day players and side characters. So he goes out of his way to get people he's acted with before that he loves, or he'll go get three-time Academy Award winner Joan Allen to play the warden. He's like, you can't. He's like, I'll spend some money to have a good character, a good actor in there, because if you don't, then it just plays false. So, so I think... Well, little, 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 known, little known fact, my favorite actor is Robert Duvall. Oh, wow. He has never wanted to play a lead role. He's a character actor. He likes playing that. And I love, well, I like playing an assist role too. So me and Robert Duvall have that kind of, but I love it because every role you see him in, he just kills it because he can. He's great in all of them. I love, I, I, all right, so how about this? Let's do something fun. I was going to do a Dick Tracy specific draft, but instead I am going to do a, I'm going to do a Robert Duvall draft with you and I. Ooh, so okay. we're going to pick our... We're going to each draft a ro- – so you know the drafts. We're just going to pick one. I pick one. You pick – or you pick one. I pick one. You pick one. I pick, pick one. So we'll have a total of five Robert Duvall movies. This is insane. Oh, oh God. So I'll let you have first pick since you're a guest. So you get your first pick of Robert Duvall movies. I'll let, I'll let you have the first one. I'm going to give you an easy out and say open range because I, I love him in that movie. Oh, he is so good in open range. Oh, my oh the shotgun blast at the end of the movie when he's been so subtle and, and just kind of simmering, and then he just, boom! This guy goes 10 feet across. The, like, at that, yeah, he's, I love him. All right, since you since you went ahead and picked open range and you didn't do something, you, you didn't go for, okay, you didn't go for Godfather first, so I'm not going to no. do that either. I'm, I'm going gonna... for my favorite Robert Duvall movies. Here. Oh, I like your style. So, all right. So now I have. Oh, my, this okay. is why I haven't won one of the contests. <laughs> <laughs> you might get. So, you know what? I'm going to do something crazy. And no one's going to understand why I did this when they see the poll. But if you go to Movie Stones of Flicks Facebook, you can come vote for me. Uh, I want. I'm going to do Jane Mansfield's car for a very pretentious reason. So it's called Jane Mansfield's car. It came out in tw- 2012, but I was a stand-in on that mo- the entire film for Ray Stevenson, and I got to be ne- like I got to see Robert Duvall working all the time. So I got to watch him, John Hurt, Kevin Bacon, Billy Bob Thornton, Francis O'Connor. I got to watch all these people work, and that's awesome. I, I, you that's know, so a, awesome. a good stand-in is, is seen, not heard, and it was, is always there. So I never really got into many conversations with him. But it was just cool watching his process, seeing him work, and he was super chill. And no one watched the movie, so I'm going to promote it. I'm going to say go watch Jane Mansfield's uh, car because it's very good, and you should watch it. So go do that. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> and you should watch it too, James. I was, I was, I had a good time on that. I have any questions you have. <laughs> I will absolutely watch it. <clears throat> just like I will at least watch Deep Blue Sea another four times this year. Yes. Which I also remember going to watch in theaters with my first ever girlfriend in high school for like our sixth date. And she brought me to see that movie. And I was like, I wanted to see Samuel L. Jackson. And he got wiped out? <laughs> <laughs> right, right away. But then LL took up took up the thing. And uh, just just a chef dying in his own oven. Yeah, oh, I a love cook, that. A cook, a cook dying in his own, sorry, yeah. A cook dying in his own oven. Deep, and I was like, oh, man. Deep Blue Sea is the best prison escape movie ever made. Yeah, but I saw The Meg because of you. <laughs> and that was not Deep Blue Sea. No, no, it's not. Deep Blue Sea is way better. I, I, I wanted it to be, but it wasn't. <clears throat> I'm going with Days of Thunder as my next Duval oh, movie. Oh, hey, anyway, nice. Because his way, our way. Oh, yeah. And I love it. He just wants to drop the hammer. <laughs> it's rubbing and bumping. <laughs> Which which Talladega Nights did excellent parody of. I just can't say enough about. That's also very true to that that movie. But yes. All right. So let's do this. Let's do post uh, after 1990. So none of his Godfathers or Apocalypse Now. Let's just do okay. 1990 and, and above to have some fun with it. How's that sound? Oh, we can't do the natural. Damn nope. It. Nope. <laughs> So we'll do it 1990 and up. Uh, dang, so it, dang it. Dang it. I, I'm going to pick something really random. Uh, man, he's so good. I'm going to do The Apostle because I love him in The Apostle. He is uh, – I remember when I watched that movie in 97, I was just blown away by how great he was. So I'm going to take The Apostle. Damn. Man, you already beat me. I've lost. It's over. No, that's – that's not true. That's not true. See, this is this is how all the contests go. I pick like two bangers and I'm like, yes, 
I've, I've won it on the, I know I lose it on the other three though every <laughs> single time because I'm like eh, which which one do I really love you know it's like ask me my favorite Harry Potter books and like I'll get totally no you'd kill me in that let's see three I guess two two uh, <laughs> right, yeah two is my two is my favorite well there's a ghost party in it that's not in the movies it's Ooh. in the book Ooh. like it's almost like the dance macabre like yes which was in the graveyard book with Neil Gaiman oh I love Neil Gaiman Oh man, have you have you read the the lake at was it the lake at the end of the road? Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. We listened to the audiobook. I got to listen oh to him read it. God, when we first got here, we didn't have internet for a little bit, so I was just reading books every night. That was one of the first ones when we moved to Baltimore. I read, and I was like, oh my, oh my so god, good. he just doesn't. Anyway, I just I got the Good that. Omens Blu-ray so I could listen to all the commentaries because he has a track on every single episode. Right after quarantine happened, what was it, like three weeks? They did the, the Good Omens quarantine five minutes short. Like, that came out. It was the first thing that gave me hope. I was like, oh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, what's your third pick? Oh, you did the Apostle. Oh, 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 oh. oh, well, then I get gone in 60 seconds. Oh, oh, I am so done. We should just quit here. You're going to wipe You're gonna wipe me off the mat. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh, man, there's so many good ones, though. Yeah, I know. He, he's made so many legit. Well, that's, 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 every role he does is just so, like if you like that movie, the movie could be terrible. Robert Duvall could be just fantastic. I, I'll put it, I, I don't want to put him in Falling Down. Uh, Falling Down, he's good. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do oh, – gosh, this is tough. Why you, why'd you pick this one? I'm going to say, you know what? I love Crazy Heart. My wife and I had a really brilliant night one time, and I like his little role in this and that. Yeah. So, I, yeah. All right, Crazy Heart, what's your fourth pick? What are you going to do? Thank, thank you for smoking. Oh, I missed out. That's what I was going to do. Oh, I'm not even going to run this one. <laughs> I'm going but he's at, so perfect in that movie. <laughs> oh, dude, he's so perfect. All right. All right, so I'm done here. So I'm just going to pick some really random ones here. You've just wiped the floor with me. I'm going to do Secondhand Lions because I think he's fun in that Shut one. Shut it down. <laughs> yeah, he's really fun in that one. Secondhand Lions. All right. And then you get your fifth pick, then I'll do my fifth pick. All right. I'll do Gods and Generals. Hey. Even though that, that, for, for his role in that, that seems like a like a like like an ill-timed one, but he does a good one. But also, we just talked about a cop movie for a long time, which, which let me say, it, it did not kind of... He tries to frame Big Boy. He locks him up, and the other patrol officer is like, "But you haven't tested the walnuts." And Dick Tracy is like, "Just throw him in there." Yep. And then the walnuts come back negative, and the first thing that Big Boy says is police brutality. And it felt kind of strange in the light of everything to be rooting for a police officer right now, who then goes on a rampage and then just starts throwing people in jail. He knocks out seven guys with one punch. <laughs> And he and puts a, just, ca a camera in without getting approval. Yeah, there there definitely was a little bit of like, ah, see, when I was a kid, I was like, yeah, Dick Tracy. And like today, I'm like, due process. <laughs> ah. All right, well, you know what? I'm going to do Deep Impact because he saves the world. Oh, see, I was going to, I was, I was, that, see, that, that would, that would have been in, in art, in the polls. That would have been one of my sway picks. Like, how am I feeling today? Am I going like historical drama or like? No one, you're safe. No one's gonna know about Jay Mantle's car, and you have open range, Days of Thunder, and Gone in 60 <laughs> Seconds. And thank you for smoking. The listeners right now aren't even gonna come to movies on the Flix Facebook because they know this thing's gonna be a total wipeout. They come for you. That's why I come here. Nah, you're, vote vote for James. He put together a much better team than mine. But all right, so with this movie though, I know what we were just talking about, but I mean, the plot, right? Okay, we haven't really talked much about the plot. We know that yeah. Dick, Dick Tracy, get, but it's so weird though. If, if you think about the story, I don't know how this movie was was nominated for a Golden Globe or BAFTA for best. It's just very like were people swayed by the look of it and how beautiful it looked because it's about a, a corrupt cop who gets framed and then everyone's like, "You're fine, we'll let you out." And then this gangster gets uh, a fake kidnapping charge. He's like, oh, dame's going to bring me down, all oh, this dame. That's what they want to do. They just want to bring these dames and kill me. And then he's killed. And then uh, it's good good day for Dick Tracy. <laughs> There's not much of a story there, is there? Is that sacrilege, what we're saying? <clears throat> um, no, 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 no. Because, I mean, okay, so th think about the time period, right? Yeah. 
we're we're getting newspapers, right? And we're getting newspapers because that's our source of news. We don't all have radios at this point. Really. That's like assuming everybody has the internet right now. They don't. Not everybody had but everybody could basically get the paper because the post office is still running. You could still go down to the the paper office, the newspaper, wherever JJ whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah. J. Jonah Jameson. Spider Man. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But that that was it. You'd get the paper. You'd sit uh, like Sunday paper. You know, I mean, you grew up in Florida. How many Bell's ads were in there? Like this many <laughs> Bell's ads? Like, two, come on now. <laughs> two million trees. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it. So so you get this thing, and and you're looking forward to it though. This is this is like the thing. This yeah. is the thing. We're looking forward to like lost episodes. Like, there's a writer strike. You. Yeah, that was tough. You know, oh, like imagine if the paper shut down in the middle of this stuff, like all these serials. You don't have anything else. You have no news. You have no entertainment. You don't know who died because there's no obituaries unless like, I mean, some people told you. I mean, the information that we have now just so far eclipses what we can even probably fathom. Like our grandparents couldn't even describe probably – how little there was it, it was it was a totally different dynamic and so looking forward to an escapist story didn't need a whole lot of plot no it you're just right to be a, it just needed to be escapist that's why dime novels existed that's that's why superman that's that's it didn't need to be complicated it just needed to be different you know like you look at the sensationalist articles like uh, Dr. Livingston, right? This is the same guy who set up the USS Jeanette to go, Jeanette to go fail, and looking for what was it, Rangoland? Yeah, the tropical paradise at the top of the world. They sent two of the most decorated people in the Navy up there in this horrible ship for sensationalism. Like that was the whole point. Which, by the way, one of the great grandsons of Herman Melville was there and became the founder of Annapolis. Oh, wow. So, That's cool. Yeah. It, it, there's actually an award for him for engineering at, 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 an, at the Navy. Well, but anyway, that's sensationalism. How you know, that's what people wanted then. Like, ah! Big Pacino. How dare you come on this show and make a good point? P th you're right. This <laughs> this is a good yarn. It's a good tale. It's, it's coppers versus grotesque bad guys with the good woman, the femme fatale. This is the noir with a comic book splash to it. And if you think about it, not 30 years ago, I mean, a lot of, you know, you know, my parents were, let's see, I don't know, my parents were 40. So you maybe you had people that were growing up before then that had read the serial in the comics and grew up with Dick Tracy. I mean, maybe that's why it made a lot of money. Maybe that's why this was a PG rated. He didn't <laughs> want this to be crazy. He didn't want this to be the crow. See, <laughs> that's actually awesome. An off awesome reference but you bring up a good point right so so we were both the same age when we saw dick tracy our grandparents are probably similar ages i don't think this was a movie for your parents to take you to i don't mm -mm. our parents didn't read this comic our grandparents did yeah our grandparents took all of us to go see this or somebody else's did yeah <laughs> i mean they're... and it made a lot of money i'll tell you that well yeah so you know it's like it's like <clears throat> My God, it, it, like if you ask my my uh, oh Jimmy Stewart, that was my pop's favorite. James Jim Stewart, that that was him, and and Peter O'Toole, that was another bit, you know. But like every opportunity that my grandparents had to teach me about their favorite actors, you know, like that was really cool. And this came out during I don't want to say that era. I hope grandparents are still doing that. I I probably won't ever be a grandparent, but I'll be a grand uncle. Yeah. And I'm going to tell them all the stuff to watch, whether they don't want to see it or not. I don't care what their parents deep, think because I'm the oldest sea. brother. <laughs> so, yeah. No, D a deep blue sea, maybe some <laughs> boys in the hood, uh, do the right thing is, is definitely going to be in there. Old, um, old boy. The, the Korean old boy. Exit to the, Eden. The first Korean. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. If you do I, that, that's trouble. <laughs> yeah, because my my brother uh, my brother lives in uh, Savannah, man. He'll, he'll come up here and just whoop me. <laughs> I, I bought that in Columbia House. I remember I could buy what I wanted on Columbia House, and I got that movie. But hey, I found a quick quote from Pacino when he has Glenn Hetty and he's going through the tunnel. He's like, "A woman, a woman, a woman. I've been humiliated by a woman. A man without a plan is not a man." Like he's going on about that for about twelve minutes. 
in this movie. But I kind of love that they just let Pacino go full Pacino in this. I mean, he, so yeah, not, uh, that's not scripted. That stuff he's saying. 